Social Studies 566. All right. <laughs> All right, so this week we were focusing on the issues that that began between America, well, the colonies and England. If you remember, the colonies had wrote, written the Declaration of Independence declaring their freedom from England. And while, while the people in America and the colonies were excited and happy about, excuse me, the letter, they were excited about finally being free. The King of England did not feel that same way, and the King of England was not going to let the colonies become free that way. So a war began between the colonies and the King in, in England, I'm sorry, the British. A war began between the two, and they had the war. I told you the war lasted for six years. They fought in the war. It was a tough war. So a lot of lives were lost. Some people gave up. They chose George Washington as the leader of the col the colony army. He was the one that led the colonies into battle. So they fought for six years fighting during this war. George Washington as the general of the colonist army. And so after six years, the war was finally over and America, well, the colonies ended up winning the war and now they were completely free from the control and rule of England. So in 67, we talked about how after the war was over, they did not want to be known as the colonies anymore. One second. So the colonies decided that they didn't want to be called the 13 colonies anymore because they were not under the control of England anymore. So they decided they either they either wanted to be different countries, 13 different countries, or they could be one country together. They decided that one country would be best because by being one country, they would be one strong unit. They would have one strong government together. And together they named it the United States of America. After this, they said it would be perfect transition into a country. And who did they choose? Of course, they chose George Washington because he was the general that led them to victory in the battle. And so they chose George Washington as the leader of the army George Wash, I mean, leader of the country, and he was known, he's known as the first president. That's why, like I said, America's capital city is Washington, D.C., and it's named after George Washington. We also can see the Washington Monument, 
which was a monument built um, for him. Unfortunately, George Washington was not the, he did not live in the White House. Um, it actually was built after his presidency, but um, he was America's first country and his nickname is the father of his country because he was the first president. So we talked about on 69 how his birthday is celebrated. It's actually February 22nd, but there is a designated holiday that is set on the calendar that celebrates Washington's birthday, but also all of the presidents, and it's called President's Day, and it's celebrated on February 20, uh, sorry, it's the third Monday in February. So every year it changes. I believe I told you guys it's February 20th. This upcoming year, next month in February, it's February 20th, and that's how it's determined every year. So the date changes every year, uh, but because it's based off of the third Monday in February, okay? So let's go ahead and look at, no, we didn't have any questions. Yeah, they do have the Yankee Doodle song, but we're skipping that. We're not going to test on that, okay? All right, so that is it, guys, for our social studies this week. Let's go ahead and move on to our science. All right, so page 58 in science. Seriously? Okay, so page 58, we're moving on to our next chapter, which is enjoying animals and their habitats. So all animals, when God created the animals, he gave them all a unique place to live in. It's a special place that was designed for them. And this place is known as their habitat. It's their home. And so on 59, we talked about how all habitats are safe places for animals. If an animal is not safe in their habitat, it will be hard for the animal to live there. We also talked about the four things that the animal needs to have in his habitat in order to survive. He needs water, space, food, and shelter. All four of those things. If an animal is missing any one of those things, it will not survive inside of its habitat. We know water, they need it to drink, of course. And for the ocean habitat, all those animals live in the water. So of course they need water. Of course they need space, space to move around, space to build their homes. They need a lot of space. They can't live in a confined area. They need food, of course, they have to eat. And of course they need shelter, somewhere to rest or when they have babies somewhere so they can keep their babies safe. So all uh, these are four things that the uh, these are the four things that animals will need in their habitat in order to survive. On page 60 we discussed how God will keep the habitats balanced and he keeps them balanced by by having a food chain. All of the habitats that we will discuss all have food chains, okay? A food chain is a way that God keeps the habitat balanced. All the food chains began with a plant. Then you'll have a small animal that will come eat the plant. But then you have another animal that will eat the small animal. And then eventually you get to the top of the food chain and that animal is usually the top. No one is hunting that animal. The food chains consist of predators and prey. Predators are the ones, ones who are out hunting like lions, sharks in the ocean, um, bears, tigers. All of those types of animals are examples of animals that are predators. Why? Because they hunt smaller animals and usually there aren't any other animals hunting them. So they are the predators. Prey will be animals like zebras, all types of different fish, shark. zebras. No, a shark is at the top of his food chain. Those are examples of 
That's not a prey. That's a predator. Prey, those are animals that are, so it's usually smaller animals. And like I said, gazelle, gazelles, um, you know, zebras, different animals like that. They're the animals that are usually hunted, right? So all food chains, they start with an, a plant and then eventually animals will eat the plant and then another animal comes. But food chains help keep the habitat balance. You don't have too much of one animal or, or less of one animal. You have the perfect amount. And that's why God made predators and prey so that the habitat could stay balanced, okay? So that's where we stopped with science. We didn't go into the ocean habitat. We'll start the ocean habitat on next week, okay? All right, guys, so that was... That was your science this week. Go ahead and get out your reading. Don't tell, no, don't tell him because the problem is you're not listening. You did this all day. All right, reading. Thank you. All right, we're on page 115 in our reading. Elijah, that's not how we write our words. Start over. I'm not saying. Yeah, I'm talking about them that are. Okay, 115. All right, Dennis, you want to start us off on 115? Yes. Yes. Okay. The knock. In the night. Sometimes it is easy to think that God doesn't have time for, uh, for our little needs. We don't pray that God will help us to come into lost. I lost but I hope. Okay. All right, good. 116, Avaya. Read out loud. Or, or help us be kind, be a kind friend. We think the we think things like that are yeah. to pray. If we keep asking God's help for what we need, even the little things, he will happily give us what we need. God loves us very much and wants to give us gift, good gifts. Okay, 116. All right, Faith. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you read 15, 16, so 17. Yeah. I am right, out ahead. of food, and a guest just came to stay at my house. The friend said, may I have some bread? It is too late. <laughs> I have already put my children to bed. I cannot help you now, the man said. 
Oh, please, the friend call from the outside. I just need bread. I have nothing to feed my guests. No friends, the man said. I do not want to wake up my children or my wife. Come back tomorrow, the man walked away from the window and got back in bed. All was silent for a moment, but then there was a knock again. Please, the friend asked. The man's children and his wife began to stir. He got up. Grudgingly and went to the table. All right, my friend, he said. I will give you all the bread you need, Jesus said. The man gave his friend bread because his friend kept asking. Okay. Next page. Hopefully they can. If we keep asking God, God will for what we need, even the little things you will to give us what we need. God wants us very much and wants to give us good gifts. Okay. All right, good. All right, yep, like that's it. it. No. Oh. I know that's what we talked about already. Oh, okay. So the story just is a reminder that God cares about our needs and um, it's okay to ask him for things that we need as well. But we just want to make sure that we're doing for others so that when it's time for God to do for us, not that he would withhold it, but you know, if you want, you know, God to bless you, then, you know, you want to help others as well. Okay. All right, guys. So that's it for our reading today. All right, so that's really all we had to cover. We covered all of our lessons that were required for today. So, Avaya, you have a good afternoon. I'll see you tomorrow for Bible, okay? Bye-bye.